My name is Bob Donaldson. I'm owner of Collaborative Strategies, and I'm here to help you save your piece of the planet with a well-designed human system. Whether you are a high-performing group looking for an edge against your competition, or your group is stuck in the just getting by mode with lots of opportunities to increase productivity, or you're suffering from significant people problems, regardless of what you're looking for, increasing collaboration in your group will solve almost any problem and cause productivity and job satisfaction to go up all at the same time. Let's start asking ourselves some tough questions so we can get down to the root causes of some of the things that are destroying our groups. How much productivity are you missing out on by not having a collaborative group? How much damage is inappropriate behavior causing in your group? Many behaviors that you have learned to live with are the same behaviors that are killing your group's ability to collaborate, guaranteed. If you are not asking yourself these questions, your opportunity for higher productivity, higher job satisfaction, lower overhead costs, and higher profits is very significant, more significant than you know. If you're not asking these questions, you already need me. Over the many years that I've helped groups collaborate, what I know is, after 28, 30 years of doing this, every group can operate like a Fortune 100 company. Sound ridiculous? Well, every group has humans, right? The auto shop down the street, the inner city food bank, or the local county maintenance department all have humans that respond to collaboration, just like NASA, just like Stanford University, or even the US Navy SEALs. I know that sounds bold and audacious and maybe even ridiculous, but the research is in. We know how the human brain works. We know how people think. We know how people respond in group situations. We've been led to believe that this is still a mystery, and that's not true. It's all well known. Over the last couple decades, I've been able to tease out and develop nearly 100 different collaborative group behaviors, 120 collaborative leadership behaviors, and using these behaviors will cause your group to explosively launch towards being an industry leader. These behaviors are broken down into two lists. The behaviors that we're not demonstrating that we should if we want a collaborative group, or the behaviors that we are demonstrating that we shouldn't be demonstrating if we want a collaborative group. About two-thirds of these behaviors you might be familiar with that you're not using right now that you should be using, and about a third of these behaviors you might be familiar with but sorely underestimated their impact if you were to use them in your group today. All of these behaviors are organized into eight very important categories. Mission, culture, effective interpersonal relationships, high quality communication, technical competency, productivity, problem solving, and continuous improvement. This is a group of high powered but easily understood behaviors. Do those numbers sound too daunting? 100 collaborative group behaviors, 120 collaborative leadership behaviors? Start feeding them into your group a few at a time, require their use, and watch what happens. Also know you don't have to use all of those behaviors overnight in order to have a huge positive impact on your group. Start feeding them in. The first few months will be a little bumpy, but after that, all you'll have to look forward to is a very collaborative group and incredible results that have staying power. I offer four packages, starter, growth, transformation, and custom. A custom package that I can design to specifically solve the unique problems your group is experiencing. Let's talk about the results that you can expect. Now that you're creating an environment where humans can grow, feel safe, be included, and start to contribute back to the group, we'll list some of those advantages that you're going to experience as you go through the implementation process. Now, as I list these off, start thinking about the particular problems in your group that you're experiencing today that these items would resolve. Behaviors that prevent collaboration drop. Job satisfaction climbs. Errors drop. Technical competency climbs. The need for direct supervision drops. Communication skills climb. Misunderstandings drop. Recovery behavior climbs. Poor decision-making drops. Independent, mission-centered decision-making starts to climb. The number of unsolved problems drop. Productivity climbs. Lost opportunities drop. Continuous improvement climbs. People problems start to dry up. 
Examples of positive performance now get recognized. Confusion drops. Expectations become clear and understandable. Quality communication climbs between leaders and those they supervise. The mission moves to center stage as a method to prioritize work. Respect and dignity between group members is commonplace. An environment is created where relationships are important. Leadership is now in a support role with no loss of power. Group members become involved in creating outcomes, accept more responsibilities over time, volunteer for jobs no one else wants to do, and have the ability to deal with adversity and still get the job done. They also have the ability to keep interpersonal relationship problems separate from work performance. If the performance feedback sessions become ever more effective, ideas for improvement start to rise, particularly related to productivity, problem solving becomes continuously more effective, group members become very good at what they do. Group members now have confidence to make decisions and know when to include their supervisor. They create improvement using the continuous improvement strategy and used over time, innovation goes organic. I've seen in many instances when decision making was moved down to technically strong people within the group and they started to innovate, a lot of continuous improvements started to occur organically, not involving top management, but still creating mission-centered outcomes. They now build trusting relationships using something we call savoir-faire. Group members help others recover from unproductive behaviors. They learn to agree to disagree about non-mission related subjects. They learn to check their ego at the door and group members now allow new facts to change their minds. All of you now work in a group where everybody's watching each other's back. Imagine what that would feel like driving up to work every day knowing you're joining a group where everybody is watching out for each other. Let's talk a little bit about why and how that happens. Our group environment determines how we are treated. How we are treated determines how we feel. How we feel determines how we think. How we feel and think will determine our behavior. Our behavior ultimately determines our success or failure to collaborate. Our increased ability to collaborate creates shared values that, when focused on mission success, promote the success of the group and the individual simultaneously. This is not magic, it's not wishful thinking, and it's not warm and fuzzy. This is the science of human behavior in group settings. When you have an enhanced environment where people feel safe to collaborate, they will. You don't have to believe me. Let's look at the work of John Cotter and James Heskett in their groundbreaking work, Corporate Culture and Performance. They did a study that tracked numerous blue chip companies in several industries over an 11 year period, measuring cultural values, behavioral patterns, and shared attitudes. They classified the companies as either having an enhanced or non-enhanced culture. It's important for everybody in the group to know why the effort of implementing collaborative group behaviors is so important. Look at the results of John Cotter and James Heskett's survey. You as a leader owe it to yourself, your board of directors, your donors, lawmakers, shareholders, citizens, customers, and fellow group members to be producing the results that can be had by providing an enhanced environment through the use of collaborative group behaviors, just like the results we saw in Cotter and Heskett's survey. With for-profit companies, profits go up. For nonprofits, overhead costs drop and services can be expanded for the same dollar. The same goes with government agencies. Now you might ask yourself, a government agency operating like a Fortune 100 company? That might sound ridiculous, but I have to stress this point. If NASA humans can do it, then the wastewater treatment plant humans in your community can do the same thing. Let's go back to Cotter and Heskett and let's ask ourselves some serious questions. Are you a leader that's having to deal with a lot of nasty people problems and what you're trying to do to fix it just isn't working? Or even worse, are you a leader that's learned to accept that a constant flow of people problems is a normal way of doing business? I have to tell you, with what we know nowadays, that's flawed logic. People problems push overhead costs up and productivity down. You might not always be using the right metrics to determine that's the problem, but believe me, the research is in, and that's what's happening. Let's ask ourselves another question. 
Has your group learned to passively accept behaviors that are destructive to collaborative relationships in the group? Or how about this one? Do you hear a constant drumbeat of leader managers always blaming the followers in the group for all its problems? If you're in a situation where the people in control are blaming the people that are not in control, you have a very big problem. Do you live in a group where accountability is lacking and it's hard to find anyone who is willing to share the responsibility for poor outcomes? This all changes in a collaborative group where recovery behavior replaces reprimand as the first, second, and third response to get someone to change. You'll remember the two lists that we talked about earlier. Well, I want to add another behavior. It's called recovery behavior. In groups that are not collaborative, people that make mistakes are penalized. In the collaborative group, we use something called recovery behavior. When you use recovery behavior, you're able to leverage those mistakes Pass that wisdom on group-wide so the mistake is not made again. Recovery behavior means you're not using reprimand as a first response. Instead, in a collaborative group, recovery behavior says that you use training, first, second, third response, way ahead of reprimand. Let me give you another example of why this is important and how this has worked for others. U.S. fighter pilots are some of the best in the world, and there's a reason for that. Yes, they have great technology and lots of training, but there's something else that happens that you might not be aware of. After each one of their missions, they're brought back into a debriefing room, and it's a safe room where they can talk about the mistakes they made on the mission. The response and the solution to those mistakes is then sent squadron-wide, so the mistake is not repeated. So you can see, creating a collaborative vessel that is safe so people can expose their mistakes does nothing more than create large amounts of wisdom being spread group-wide. Your group can grow at a meteoric rate when the group is safe enough to expose the mistakes that they have made. Many assume there is nothing you can do about people problems, nothing you can do about fixing productivity problems, nothing you can do about high overhead costs, or nothing you can do about stopping relationship-destroying behavior. That thinking is now out of date. Let's face it. Being a leader in a non-collaborative group is a very difficult experience and from one day to the next can be a horrible experience. You leave work and all you can do as you're driving down the road is think about the fact that you're going to have to come back in the next day and do it all over again, surrounded by people who are part of the problem. If you are a leader, you already know it is your responsibility to fix what is broken and it's your responsibility to make things better. And not only is it your responsibility to lead a group, it's your responsibility to lead a successful group. I'm here to help you with those responsibilities. Once you build a collaborative group, your leadership career will become a deeply satisfying experience. With all the packages that I offer, the starter package, the growth package, and the transformation package, along with the custom package that I can design for you, all come with a comprehensive leadership manual it's 194 pages of information that can carry you through a lifetime career. Many leadership techniques taught today are great in theory or concept, but when they're applied in the field, they just don't work. It's a truth nobody wants to talk about. The concept might be great, but it's not accepted by the other, more senior leaders on the leadership team in the group. The concept might be great, but it can't be practically applied because of the long-held beliefs in the group. The concept might be a great idea, but the rate of situational changes is so rapid, it overwhelms even the best of leadership styles. The concept might be great, but because management duties and leadership duties are not well-defined, management duty delegation is dropping, while leadership abdication is rising. All of this, and I mean all of this, can be changed in a collaborative group by using what's in the comprehensive leadership manual such as the must-have behaviors for leaders. These must-have behaviors are behaviors that are easily understood and easily used by every leader. The daily leadership activity checklist. This checklist keeps your leadership and management skills showing up in the field day to day. As long as you're checking those boxes every day your group will grow dramatically. It also includes collaborative leadership initiatives. These initiatives are broken down into the same basic 
eight categories of collaborative group behaviors. Mission, culture, effective interpersonal relationships, high quality communication, technical competency, productivity, problem solving, and continuous improvement. Let's wrap this up by going over some of the material we covered earlier. Humans respond to an environment that encourages collaboration. It's the same environment that a leader can influence. We know what it takes to create an enhanced environment. Cotter and Heskett had a survey that told us as such, and now with collaborative group behaviors, we know we can create an environment that causes individuals to feel included, to feel an element of control, and feel an element of openness so they know that they're in a collaborative group. Also, an enhanced group will trounce relationship-destroying behaviors, which is very important to reducing fear. Last but not least, when you have a collaborative group, you're going to be able to retain your best talent. And not only that, but you'll be able to attract talent like a magnet for those roving around looking for a group just like you. At Buildout, using collaborative group behaviors and collaborative leadership initiatives. Mission-centered, independent decision-making is extremely high, lowering the demands for direct supervision. Productivity rates rise from mediocre to blinding. Continuous improvement becomes an organic activity within the group. As long as leadership holds and protects the collaborative vessel, the results will always have staying power. If you're interested in being better than you are today, if you want to create a group that others will point to as an example to follow, if you want to create an enhanced environment of collaborative group behaviors, contact me. Thanks for listening. Be well.